I'm glad he took me up on my invitation to join me in the studio. Please take a seat. Do, 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 do. Hello, and my name is Clive from Clive's Art. And you join me in the studio today. And behind me, you will see the subject we're about to talk about. Now, I've been asked by several different subscribers, and thank you very much for subscribing, um, how to paint clouds. Now, when is a cloud not a cloud? And the answer is, when it's a painting of a cloud. Because they are very finicky, funny things, clouds. There's, to try not to make it too complicated, cloud is ever changing, ever moving. You, we look up in the sky and then a second later the cloud has changed and you'll never see that again. And it's, it's, it's as simple as that. It is water vapour in the atmosphere and it comes in all different colours um, when the sun is setting, when the sun is rising, if it's a storm etc etc. Snow clouds are different to uh, summer clouds are different from autumn clouds and so it's a minefield. Now what I suggest you do is don't paint clouds from your memory when you're beginning. It's the most important thing that you must not do. It's better to copy from a photograph. Now I mean go outside, take some photographs of some different clouds, look on the internet. Um, now you can see behind me that this is a, a sunset and all the different colours there. You've got obviously the blue top of the sky over there and you've got the purpley colours down here and where well, there's, there's yellows in there, there's oranges in there and it's, it, 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 it can be a minefield so try to paint basic cloud formations first now I'm not going to go into all the different cloud formations and what this cloud is different to that cloud is and how high it is to the different you don't need to know that you need to know how to paint the basic cloud but when we come to paint the basic cloud we tend to paint it in a certain way and that's as we, as we remember it mainly from childhood so they're, they're big fluffy things they're not always fluffy as you can see behind me these couple of years are a bit more fluffier than these year and, and the distance as well so looking at this particular cloud formation you've got a nice dark blue sky and you've got a nice fluffy cloud formation like we know it but as you notice the edges it depends where the light is coming um, the light is hit in this top edge there but it's darker in this section and it gets darker underneath as well so there's a lot of shadows within the cloud and there's a lot of highlights and there's little pockets of shadows as well where the, the light is coming through but it's been obscured and so we, we need to address that situation also and again in this um, example there's a few trees down here and the cloud is fluffy but as you can see the different dark spots so have a look for the shadow areas um, when we paint clouds we tend to think of them as all white and fluffy but they're not because in this example we've got the mountain and sheep and trees um, but look there's not really a fluffy cloud there. You've got a dark area here. There's most probably a storm coming in. Um, but you've got the whiter area with the shadows underneath. So they're not always white and fluffy and circular. And this, this example is a, a lovely example. Um, I think I took this photograph on the motorway, believe it or not. As, uh, I wasn't driving at the time. I was a passenger. And you can see the, the reds and the oranges and the purples in the sky now the, because the, the light is, the clouds are being lit from underneath because the sun is setting low and, and, and the colours is actually catching the colours of the sunset itself and again in this example we've got, this was taken um, in um, down by the seaside where I live and not far from where I live I should say and again you can see that there's flashes of yellow in there 
and now the, the clouds uh, in the foreground are these dark ones here are, are being lit from the back so they're more into a silhouette and like a kind of purpley effect and you can see the colour in this as well. And going back to this example, um, this was take, these are all the photographs that I've taken um, because you know, in my job as well. Like, I open, and these, these things, you know, you, you've got iPhones and things like that, so we, if you see a lovely sky, take a picture of it because you'll never see it again. And it's good to incorporate these into your paintings. And again, this is more of a, um, you've got a lovely bit of light, like a cellulon blue there. We've got a couple of buildings, but we don't worry about them. But you can see this, this. It's, it's just it's just flat basically there's not 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 much fluff in it at all and but you can see the colors the different um, tones of uh, shadows in the um, clouds themselves and again this was taken on the same day and there's a few fluffy ones down here but you can see they're not always white so you've got that lovely undertone blue gray type of color um, and that's just giving you the depth there now in this example, you've got a nice blue sky, and you've got those white um, effect clouds there, and this one here has got a little bit of um, rain in it, because it's, it's a little bit darker, but it's, again it's been lit from the back, so it's got more of a shadow to it. And the same day again, as you can see, it's similar type of thing. You've got the clouds in the distance, and nice because they're well lit, and the clouds this side are more in shadow. Um, this tip, particular example is taken from the aeroplane on the way over to um, Cyprus, because that's where I went on holiday this year, and I believe this was um, around Italy type way somewhere like that, and uh, maybe the Alps. I don't know. Um, now this is looking down, this is down from the aeroplane, this is 35,000 feet down onto the clouds and we never see clouds like this. So you've got the opportunity of taking some photographs of clouds when you're up in the air in, the, in a plane then this is a brilliant way of looking how they're actually formed because you wouldn't, this is the closest you ever get to a cloud really except from when you're in fog and you can't see the cloud because it's foggy. And, and this this shot now is taken um, in the spring, I think it was. But you can see you've got a couple of um, jet trails, and you've got those little stringy clouds. I call them stringy clouds, and you've got the sun up in this corner here. Um, but again, they're not all fluffy. Similar type of thing again. Um, I think this is uh, the, the same shot. Um, but you can see how those so clouds you not, don't always have to paint a blue sky and put just fluffy clouds in because it doesn't actually work that way. But in this example behind me, there are fluffy clouds, and as you can see, um, you've got a little bit of a rain cloud. So I don't don't ever hesitate to put um, a couple of rain clouds in because it, it adds a little bit of atmosphere to your painting. I think. And, and you can just see how these, these are a little bit more complicated to paint because there's a little bit more shadow involved in that. And the example behind me then, again, it's like a bit of a slideshow years ago when we used to have these projectors and used to have these spools years ago. This was me sitting on the beach. This is me having an ice cream. This is me sitting on the beach having an ice cream. <laughs> It's not like that. I'm just trying to explain to you how the clouds are. And then again, as you can see, this is in the distance. Now, these are really fluffy clouds, these are. Um, this is a good example of, if you want to do a landscape, um, you can put something in the foreground. But these, these um, clouds are in the distance. Now, the further they are away from you, the smaller they are. So if you have a look at these ones, now, they look as if they're all bunched up together. And as you come closer, Obviously this part of the sky is just above me. I know it doesn't look like it on the photograph, but as you can see the, the, the clouds are spaced out even more. And this wonderful cl uh, cloud formation here, again, has got a little bit of yellow or orange into it. Um, I don't know exactly when I took this one, but um, again, this, is, could, this could be a really effective um, uh, cloud painting. Um, and this is the same... Um, 
photograph from a different angle. And then we're moving on. Now this is it. This is exactly what I'm saying to you. If you can see the clouds down here, all bunched up and look as if it's one big mass of clouds, and that's because it's so far away. But then the sky is broken up. You've got a lot of blue in it, and not so many fluffy clouds up here, but they all seem to be down there. Again, some more conventional fluffy clouds. Um, and this one is um, what I call like a mackerel cloud effect. Um, you can see that it, 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 it's a solid mass here, but it's just a couple of little flicks coming out. And we're coming up to the end of our slideshow now. And this is me sitting on the beach, having an ice cream, sitting in my dick too. <laughs> Sorry, I do have a bit of, I have a, I, we're going to have a laugh. Life, life's too short to worry about. Stupid things like clouds, but we've got to paint them because we're artists. So, but the point of this is that we need to study clouds in order to paint them. Because if we don't know how they look and form, and they're all different things, and because we sit there sometimes, we go, Oh, that's not right, it's not right, it's not a cloud. Yes, it is a cloud because that's what the cloud looks like. Um, again, this is more of a, like a macro type of sky. And I'm going back then, um, this is a, a bit of a mountain range, and you can see those those, those sort of fluffy cloud effects that we think of as we when we paint clouds, this is what we look at, again, in the distance. But the top of the sky now is all, it's like all white, is there any blue in it, so it doesn't have to always be blue in the sky. There we go. And that t takes me to the end of my slideshow, as far as clouds are concerned. Now what we're going to do is, pick one of those and then see if we can recreate that in paint. So what I suggest you do now before I actually go and start that process is I think it would be a good idea if you went out now and took some photographs of some clouds and then when I come back with this series next week you'll have a little bit more understanding of clouds. So it's important to go out even if you just look in the sky, if you've got a camera brilliant phone, camera phone, take some photographs of the sky, keep them as reference because you never know when you need those particular skies in your paintings. So I'm not going to do any painting in this particular um, lesson but I just want you to understand how the forms of clouds differ and how we can incorporate them into our bits of artwork. So if you, if I would invite you to go into the garden, take some photographs, have a little study and then next week we'll actually sit down and start painting some clouds. Now that's going to be fun because uh, I like painting clouds because they're ever changing and you can never be wrong unless you paint these schoolyard clouds. So thanks very much for watching. I know this has been a little bit more of a tutorial as far as words are concerned but it is important that we get this into our minds before we can proceed with clouds and skies. So um, without further ado, my name is Clive from Clive's Art. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week with the painting. So we'll get going on that one. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did making it and painting it, I must add. And, um, well, thank you very much for watching. Check me out on Facebook. You can join me on Twitter. Don't forget to check those playlists out. And I invite you to press the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Clive from Clive's Art and I will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.